we have Patrick Kennedy with us to, right now then. Hello, Patrick. Oh, welcome to Flaskon. Patrick is going to talk to us today about demystifying flex, flex application and request content with high test. Thank you. So yeah, today I'm going to be talking about the, uh, the application and request context in Flask. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a software engineer with uh, experience doing real-time applications and web applications. And over the years, I've really gravitated towards C++ and Python as being my favorite languages. Um, one of my current endeavors is being an author at testdriven.io. Um, I have two courses there. I released a course back in January on Vue, which is a popular JavaScript framework. And I'm actually just wrapping up a course on Flask, which should be ready to be released uh, next month in August. Okay, so a little background about this talk. So when I first started learning about Flask and creating my first few Flask applications, um, I remember reading about the application context and the request context and not really understanding like what they meant and what their purpose was. Um, but you know, a lot of that is just taken care of for you by the Flask framework. So most of the time you don't have to really think about it. Um, fast forward a little bit, I ran into a really strange error when doing some testing with a Flask application. And that was my motivation for really diving in and trying to understand how these two contexts work in Flask. So the goal is of this talk is to provide some clarity on what the application or request context mean and why you should, um, you know, try to understand them if you're developing a Flask application. So this talk is uh, in two sections. Um, the first part is kind of discussing the concepts of how the application request context work in Flask. And then the second part is providing an example of how the application context can come into play when you're doing testing. And that hopefully will like solidify the concepts from the first part. Okay, so let's jump into context in Flask. All right, so I first wanna start with, you know, what is a context? Um, so if you're writing code, you know, you're always gonna be doing stuff like coming up with logic statements, um, you know, doing all sorts of calculations on data that's coming in, but you know, you need data to be able to like execute your code. And this can be stuff like, um, the configuration that you're running in, data that's coming in that you need to be processing. And so contexts are what keep track of that data for you so that you can perform your software operations. Um, I think a lot of people use the word, use uh, states as being synonymous with context. So it's really kind of what you need, all the data you need to be able to run your code. So in Flask, the concepts, the context that we're concerned with are going to be providing us the data to order in order to process requests that come in or to process command line interface commands. Um, so the focus of this talk is going to be on like how we process requests, but the concepts will also apply to CLI commands as well. Okay, so from a high level, uh, I want to talk about how requests are processed in Flask. So you have your web browser. Um, you open up and you make a request to a URL. Uh, in this case, we're making a request to our homepage. That gets sent to your web server and the web server tells the Flask application to process that request and a response gets sent back to your web browser. And, and so this is kind of the, uh, the request response cycle. That's really one of the key functions of a web server. So when that request comes into the Flask applications, into the Flask application, there are two contexts that we're concerned with. There's the application context and the request context. So the application context is keeping track of the application level data. Um, you can kind of think of this as like the data that's gonna be around like from like request to request to request. So this is stuff like your configuration variables, um, like the secret key, um, and also the logger, that's another example of application level data. And then the 
request context is kind of keeping, it's keeping track of you know more specific data that's unique to that request. So it's going to be things like what's the URL that was requested, uh, what's the HTTP method, whether it was you know get post delete. Um, it's also going to keep track of the data that's part of that request, and that's especially important for like a post or a put request. Okay, so we've got those two contexts, and these are both going to be created when the request comes in, but these are created by the Flask framework. So this is something where if you're developing a Flask application, you don't need to worry about creating these. These are all taken care of for you. Okay, so here's an overview of how the request comes in and how the contexts uh, are handled and then eventually getting it to a response being sent back. Um, so there's a lot going on in this diagram. So I'm gonna be stepping through each of these steps in the next few slides. So, uh, okay, so step number one. So first thing that happens is a request comes in and it's received by the web server. Um, the web server could be, you know, the Flask development server, if you're running, you know, in a development environment, or it could be G Unicorn, uh, or, you know, whatever web server you want to use. Um, so, but that's where the request first comes in. Then the next step is that the web server is going to say, all right, I need something to handle this request, and it's going to spawn a worker to handle that request. So the worker could be a thread, a process, a coroutine. Um, it actually doesn't matter. I think the key thing to remember is that the worker is gonna be handling one request at a time. So that request comes in and it's the worker's responsibility to handle that single request. Um, so to give you an example, like if you're using the Flask development server, uh, this worker would be a thread if you're using like the default configuration. So again, yeah, key takeaway here is the worker is going to be handling one request at a time. All right, so now with the execution is going to switch over to the Flask application and the Flask application is going to create the request context and the application context and it's going to push them to their respective stacks. So you've got the application context going into the application context stack and the request context going into the request context stack. Um, it may be a little bit surprising to see these up here in like the global uh, namespace, but we'll talk a little bit more in the next chart about why these two objects are global. Okay, so now at this point, we've got a worker that's ready to process the request, and we've got the contexts up here with the data that we need to process that request. So how do we connect those two pieces? That's where proxies come in. So there's two proxies that we're concerned with. There's the current app, which is a proxy to the application context. And then there's the request proxy, which is a proxy to the request context. Now, these proxies are actually really cool. This is one of the coolest design features of Flask, I think. Um, these proxies are making these contexts available to the view function. And what's really cool here is that you've got these stacks that are up here and like that are global objects. And then you're going to have a worker that's requesting data. And so this current app and request proxy, they're going to almost look like global variables to the view function. And they're going to be accessing these global objects. But what's really cool is that these stacks are implemented as context locals. So the data that you're getting back in the view function is going to be specific to that view function. And so then if you had another worker down here below, it would have those same proxies, the current app and request but it would be getting back the data that's unique to that worker. So, you know, this all happens, a bit of magic here, but this is really um, this concept of context locals. And um, this actually plays off of something that's in the Python standard library, which is 
uh, something called thread local data. So that's data that would be unique to each thread. And I think what's kind of cool, the cool way to think about this is that you've got this data that you're going to get back data that is both thread safe and thread unique. Um, and so the same thing applies with these context local objects. This is just kind of the, the flask implementation of this to be able to handle different types of workers. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about proxies. So if you were creating a web framework from scratch, I think you know a natural way to implement these view functions would be to actually pass in the application the request context into each view function that's handling a request. Um, and that would work. You know, you could then just use those contexts as you need. Um, however, in Flask, you don't have to do that. Flask provides the current app and the request proxies. And so then from the perspective of the view function, these two proxies look like global data or global variables, but they're actually proxies so that you're getting, you know, data that's unique to the, uh, the worker that's executing this. And I, I really like this implementation because this really simplifies this definition, this, uh, this view function that you can see here, you know, we don't need to pass in any arguments for the context. They're just available to us from Flask. Okay, so now the last step, um, the view function finishes executing, it creates a response. And at this point we need to clean up, um, you know, what we've done. So we need to pop the application context from its stack and the request context from the stack. And then the response gets sent back to the web browser and we are done handling that request. Okay, so talk a little bit about the concepts of like the application and the request context. And now I wanna give an example of how the application context can come into play uh, when you're doing testing. The examples that I'm gonna show are gonna be using PyTest, which is a popular test framework. I would say between PyTest and unit test, uh, unit test being built into the Python standard library, those are kind of the two um, most popular testing frameworks at this point. <clears throat> All right, so here's an example of a, of a short test. It's testing the response that you would get if you were to send a get request to your home page. You would get back response, and you're just checking that the status code is 200 okay, and you're checking that you get any you know, welcome from the data back. Um, now, what's interesting here is that there's an argument being passed into this test function, which is called test client. And that's what we're using to actually make the request here. So, so since we're using PyTest, um, this argument is actually a fixture. And a fixture, a fixture is used to get your test into a known state. Um, so this is really important, I think, so that your test always run in a predictable manner and in a repeatable manner. Fixtures are one of the coolest uh, parts of PyTest. I think especially once you really start using them and seeing how they can be chained together to get your initialization like just the way you want, they're, they're really powerful. Um, so in this case, the fixture is creating a Flask application using using an application factory method, or application factory function, sorry. Um, we're then creating a test client that's being returned. And this test client can be used within our test function. Okay, so we've got the fixture that does all the initialization to get things into a good known state. And then we run our test function. All right, so if you run this, you know, everything will work and, you know, everything's great. Uh, let's say we want to add a log message into our fixture, and you, know, you could do this to kind of maybe say, well, I want to see how this fixture, when does it run relative to the 
to like the test functions that I've written. And so as we learned earlier, you know, you would want to use a proxy. So you'd import that from Flask and you'd have your current app proxy. And using that, you can access the logger and then you can log an information message to say, okay, I'm here in the test client fixture. And so if you run this, oh, you get an error. And you get a runtime error and it says working outside of an application context. I, I've seen this message <laughs> a few times so I kind of cringe when I see this, but um, what's happening here? So this error is being caused by that line that we just added to log a message. And it's telling us that we are out working outside of the application context. So what does that mean? Well, if we go back to the diagram from earlier, when we're executing a function and we want to use the current app proxy, that proxy is pointing back to the app context stack. So there has to be something on that stack in order for the proxy to be valid. And so in the here of this test fixture, we're using the proxy, but there's nothing on the stack. For and so that's why we get that error message that says, you know, we're working outside the application context. All right, so how can we fix that? Um, basically what we need to do is mimic what the Flask application does in this scenario, which is to push the application context to the stack, and then we'll be able to use the proxy. Let's take a look at the updated fixture. So um, just like in the diagram, what we need to do is first establish an application context. So we take our function and we call app context. So now we have an application context and then we need to push that onto the application context stack using the push function. So now at this point, um, the application context is on the stack and now this current app proxy is gonna be valid. And so now we can use it to access logger and we can log our message. And just like in the diagram, when we were done um, processing a request here in this case, when we're done using the current app proxy, we pop it from the application stack as kind of like that cleanup step. So again, you need to make sure that you're pushing context to the stack, then you have access to the proxy and you can pop or then you need to pop the application context from the stack as a cleanup step. So I really like this approach because it's very kind of like methodical and shows you, you know, all steps that didn't happen, you know, kind of before you use the proxy and then the cleanup afterwards. Um, but I would say that a better approach would be to use a context manager. So we can Simple lines from the previous slide into using a context manager. So you can use a with statement here. So we're going to say with um, the flask dot app context. Um, this will take care of all of the you know the steps beforehand for like pushing to the application context stack and then clean up popping from the stack. And then just go ahead right away and use uh, your current app proxy to access your logger. So it's a really nice, you know, clean approach, I think. Okay, um, so in conclusion, um, hopefully you learned something about the application, the request context, um, and how they work within Flask. Uh, I think they're a really cool design feature in Flask, and I love the idea that there's these proxies um, that look like global variables to your view functions, but they're actually, um, you know, they're actually context locals. So they're very, they're always going to be unique to like the, ex the execution that you're doing. So always make sure to use the constat and the request proxies. Um, and, you know, most of the time when you're, using, you're developing view functions, you won't have to worry about um, the context. But I think it's really important to know how they work in the background. And especially if you're doing testing, you might run into issues with it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, here's my email, my Twitter handle.
Um, so feel free to contact me if you have any questions about uh, these slides. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Um, so I have a question already for you here. Uh, so why are both application and request contacts necessary when both are unique to a single request? Um, well, they're pretty like different because like the request context is going to be, you know, very, very unique to the request that came in and the application context is usually going to have data that's going to apply like across multiple requests. Um, so that's kind of more things like uh, the application configuration or the logger. I think those are two good examples of it. So um, I think it's good that they're, they're kept separate. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, let me just see. Any more questions? Anyone? Yeah, I have another question. Please do. In your uh, PyTest example, you showed that you have created uh, the Flask app, and afterward you use the current app. Is there a difference between using the current app instead of the Flask app you have created earlier? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was really just to show an example of okay. like how the application context can come into play. Okay. I was basically trying to, you know, <laughs> get that error to happen. <laughs> okay, okay. And then explain how you fix it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Perfect. And then uh, another one. So, is it a good idea to use application context for caching larger Python objects? like partially filled classes? You know, I would say in general, you don't want to do, you don't want to manipulate the application or request context. Um, I think there's some Flask extensions that do that. Um, but I mean, I think that's a, a very advanced topic that I think we want to tread lightly in trying to do that. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, let me see if I have anything on Twitch as well. Mm. There's a couple people still typing. Uh, we'll see if anybody sends something in the next minute. Perfect. So just a second now. Uh -huh. Perfect. So, well, great talk, um, Patrick. Uh, Arno is saying, and he's asking if it's possible to pass the application context to context and request context to a thread in Flask. Yes. Yes. If you want to create a separate thread, um, there's a decorator that you can use to pass those contexts to the thread. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the documentation and remember what those decorators are. Um, I'll look that up if it's included in the, the Discord chat. Okay, cool. It's something like a copy, you know, copy request context or copy application context, something like that. Mm, so, like, say so we have more people typing here. We have time for one more question, I think. So let's just see. Jog is asking if um, he understood it right. So the Flask is not running, but it started for each request then. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you start up um, your Flask application, there's like an initialization state uh, that occurs. And then you're basically in a wait state until a request comes in. And then when that request comes in, uh, your Flask app is kicked off to process that request. So I guess that's it then. So, well, thank you very, very much, Patrick. It was a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.